What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Absolute Strength Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Hunt, back with another episode, and today we have Kyle Crutchmer on the podcast. He is a pro MMA fighter, two-time All-American wrestler, two-time Big 12 champion from Oklahoma State. This was a cool podcast. You guys know my uh, my wrestling background. I love talking about it. I love talking MMA every chance I get, so this was a cool podcast. I think you guys are going to like it. We, uh, we dug into a lot of different topics, really. And we kind of were all over the place, but it was, it was a good conversation. Like I said, you guys are going to enjoy it. Make sure you go follow him. He actually has a fight next week. So uh, go give him a follow on the gram and, and tell him good luck. Before we get to the podcast, as always, this episode is sponsored by PR Breaker. PRBreaker.com, the pre-workout I use and recommend. PR Breaker Materia, three great flavors, Blue Raz, Cotton Candy, Orange creamsicle, and of course the mystery fourth flavor. Well, it's not really a mystery, the kind of secret, I guess you could say, secret fourth flavor that ever, it's been blowing up on Instagram. I mean, I get tagged in in uh, the Blue Raz Orange Creamsicle flavor combo all the time. It's just one scoop of Blue Raz, one scoop of Orange Creamsicle. Now the benefit is, I mean, you get the same great great formula. Get the creatine, get the citrulline malate, get the beta aline, get everything good. Get half the caffeine, because Blue Raz and Cotton Candy is 300 milligrams of caffeine, 150 milligrams per scoop. The Orange Creamsicle is caffeine-free, so when you do one of each, it's half the caffeine, which, you know, there is some benefit to that, especially if you're consuming a bunch of caffeine at other points, points in the day. Or, also kind of relevant to this episode, if you're a wrestler or MMA fighter, like you, you want a pre-workout, you want some caffeine, you want some energy before, you know, whatever, whether it's like a wrestling practice, striking practice, etc. But you might not want 300 milligrams of caffeine. You might want 150, which really, to put it in perspective, 150 milligrams of caffeine I mean, it's really just like a, a big cup of coffee. Like, so, so for example, when I go to Starbucks, the the my my Starbucks order is pretty simple. But I get a grande, which is medium, I guess, medium size of their Pike Blend, which is just a, a medium coffee. And according to the website, that's three hundred milligrams of caffeine. Starbucks coffee is a little bit higher in caffeine than than regular coffee, but so a medium sized coffee. I don't know, probably, I don't even think it's sixteen ounces. I'm I don't know, but I would I would think probably maybe somewhere between twelve and fourteen ounces probably is is three hundred milligrams of caffeine. So one hundred and fifty. I mean, like I said, you're you're getting like a cup of coffee, a strong cup of coffee. Um, so you know, just kind of put that in perspective. PRBreaker.com discount code is Hunt Ten. Save yourself some money. Help support the Absolute Strength Podcast and get the best pre workout on the market. I mean, it's all studied dosed ingredients. I've, you've heard me talk about it before. I highly recommend it. If I was formulating a pre-workout, it would look exactly like PR Breaker Materia. Last but not least, two things. I haven't mentioned it in a while, but I've been getting some questions. Yeah, the, the deal with the Absolute Strength ebook, the original, the OG bundle. If you get the original Absolute Strength program I wrote in 2016, it really digs into programming and how I set up a program to gain strength, build muscle. I called the OG Absolute Strength, the original Absolute Strength, an off-season powerlifting program because it's set up to, you can, you can run it over and over again. And it's going to increase your squat, bench, and deadlift, but it's also going to help you build muscle too. It's a pretty well-rounded program. Version 2.0 is a meat prep program. So that one is set up to maximize your strength at the end of it. And it gets pretty aggressive, so it's really not set up to just run repeatedly. You probably want to do the original absolute strength, do version 2.0, and then go back to the original for a couple cycles, and then do version 2.0 again. Like I said, the link is in the show notes, and if you get the original OG bundle, you get Absolute Strength 1 and 2. Of course, you can just get Absolute Strength version 2.0 by itself as well. Check it out. Link is in the show notes. I also have a bench press specialization program and an advanced bench press specialization program, two bench press programs available as well. Links are in the show notes. All those books are great options. If you want some structure into your, your training program, like if you're not, if you don't have any training program right now that you're following, definitely look into those books. It's a great option for people who want some structure and in, in a quality program, but maybe they're not ready to hire a coach. Now, for those of you who maybe have already followed the training program, whether it was Absolute Strength, Version 2.0, Bench Press, or even something else, you've already kind of done the, 
following a program route and you want to take it to the next level, you want to get your training really dialed in, your nutrition really dialed in. For powerlifting, I mean, right now, honestly, I think right now is probably the best collection of powerlifters Hunt Fitness has ever had. I and mean, we have a bunch of savage powerlifters right now. It's great. I love it. And um, the team is growing and we're, we're kicking ass left and right. So if you want to join this, now's the time. I mean, let's, the train is moving. If you're a powerlifter, you're serious about t- your training in 2019. Damn, we're almost a month through 2019 already. If you're serious about getting on the next level this year, the link is in the show notes for more information about my coaching or just send me an email, kylehuntfitness at gmail.com. Let's jump on a call. Let's talk. Let's talk about your training. Let's talk about your goals. Let's talk about your nutrition. Let's get you set up for 2019. Let's set you up. And if you don't want, you don't even have to compete. If you just want to be a badass, I'm here for you. Kylehuntfitness at gmail.com. Let's talk. Let's get it started. Let's get to this podcast. We have a badass on this podcast, Kyle Crutchmer. Enjoy. Kyle, dude, what's up? Oh, man, just got done training, man. Not too long ago, just had some food, and I'm on a little bit of a strict diet, so I'm eating a little, as clean, clean as I can. I like to take a little bit of a, some chocolate here and there, but yeah, right what's now, your, I'm uh, clean. What's your weight at right now? Um, I'm probably around 184, 183 and fighting at 175. So, but I started out about 205. Shit, 205. So you're getting pretty big. Yeah. I'm, I, I mean, I was 214 in college. So, yeah. Yeah. What well, weight did you wrestle in college? 174. Oh, all right. So, yeah. So you were cutting more in college yeah. then. We were, uh, we didn't, we didn't do it right though. You know, college weight cuts are pretty uh, extreme. So, yeah what um what weight would you weigh in high school my senior year i wrestled at 170 i weighed about 190 playing football all right so you played football yeah i played football on a really good football team so where uh where'd you go to high school tulsa union where's that oklahoma Oklahoma. tulsa oklahoma yeah so you stayed right in state for uh for college yeah man uh john smith came to my house and I don't know if I've ever been starstruck. And then when he came to my house, man, I was like, oh, damn, that's uh, it's John Smith. And we were sitting at the dinner table. My mom made us food. And he was just, the way he was looking at me, man, I was like, dang, I, I really want to wrestle for this dude. So and then he told me if, uh, if I didn't commit to him, that he was going to recruit someone else and they were, they would beat my ass. So I was like, <laughs> I was like, Oh, he made it really believable too. I really believe him. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to go to Oklahoma state. So yeah, I stayed in state, man. It was a lot of fun too. So yeah, that's wild. So what was the, uh, I mean, you talked about when uh, John Smith came to your house, what was like the whole recruiting process? Like, man, it was a lot of fun. Um, I, I just remember, I think it was June or July 1st. I forget the actual day that call just to start calling you. I mean, I knew I was, I knew I was doing well. I knew I was, I was having a successful high school career. And then when that day happened, man, you really realized that you, you were really doing a lot better than you thought, you know, cause I was getting phone call after phone call from all these big time colleges talking to the coaches and wrestlers that I, I've always looked up to. And uh, man, it was a lot of fun. Um, but like I said, my, my recruiting process, I didn't get to take a lot of business cause I was, I was in football season and we were going for our four state title in a row and we were really good. And then, um, so I couldn't take as many business I would have liked. And then coach Smith came to my house and pretty much shut everything down for me. So yeah. Do, do teams easy like, decision for me? Yeah. Do teams like have uh, like former like alumni call and talk to you and shit like that? Um, I mean, no, but like when you're like, when you're at tournaments, they kind of go out of their way. You know, those national tournaments, they kind of go out of your way to kind of like say something. I don't know really all the NCAA rules, but yeah, I know they're kind of strict. Kind of, but they kind of, they kind of will come at you and 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 say like, you know, maybe you should, you know, go wrestle at Wyoming, or maybe you should come wrestle for us. And I don't know, man. It, it was a lot of fun. I, I just, I just remember just kind of being and starstruck about some of the phone calls I was getting. And, uh, 
man, it was a lot of fun, you know, growing up when, especially competing in any sport, you want to go, you know, to the highest level. And yeah. that day I, I really realized that it was a possibility. And, and for about five or six months, man, I had a lot of fun with it. So did you, uh, was there any debate whether you're going to play football? Man, I, uh, I was, I was pretty good. I had really good seasons. Um, I played running back on a, on a, we were four time state champs. We were top 10 in the country. I played running back and linebacker. I was the only guy to go both ways. Every one of my foot and every one of my family played division one football, like big time. And I don't know, man, I just, I, I kind of feel like I wanted to do my, my own thing and be a little different. And it got to a point where I just really, really enjoyed wrestling. And I, I, I really enjoyed kind of being on my own out there in front of everybody and, the individual part of it all. And I don't know, man, I, I thought about football. I had some offers. I had people talk to me, but like I said, when I'm telling you when coach Smith came to my house, man, it was all like, Whoa, you know, like yeah. just because you see him, you're, you know, I'm from Oklahoma. So you see him and he's never really said anything to me, but I was winning and he would like, look at me, but then he would like not say anything. We'd be in the same room. And he wouldn't say anything. So I was like, man, am I not doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I not good enough for this dude? And then finally I get a call. He's like, hey, I'm going to be at your house tomorrow. Like, didn't ask me, like, what are you doing? He was just like, I'm going to be at your house tomorrow. And I was like, oh, my God. So I remember, like, cleaning my room. Um, I just remember I was, like, trying to clean everything, you know, trying to impress this man. Um, and I was like, I was kind of a hardhead. So it was, like, a big deal for me to start doing all that and get prepared for this guy. So. When he came to my house, man, I, I kind of knew right away where I wanted to go. Yeah, that's wild. So you guys just like ate dinner at your house? We ate dinner. Man, I, I have a funny story. I, I had earrings at the time. And I thought, you know, I thought I was a little gangster in high school. Yeah. Um, and I just remember he walked up to me and he sits down and he goes, first things first, I'm not going to recruit you with them damn things in your ear. <laughs> and i was like man right away i took him out and i threw him in the trash next door next to me and i never put him back in wow. i was like yeah i just yeah i'm not i should be wearing these things you know so <laughs> after that he kind of like changed my whole perspective on what i was supposed to be dressing like and stuff too so he had a lot of power over me for for a little bit well, a lot of that's one of the things with with college sports. I mean, not just wrestling, but I mean, you see it in, in college football too. Like these these head coaches, like they are they're so powerful, man. Dude, I mean, essentially, I I don't I don't like saying it, but essentially, man, they're your daddy. Like they run everything. They have. I mean, at the end of the day, if you mess up, they have every right and every power to kick you out of there. And what what I liked about him was, man, I, I'm like I said, I. I was kind of a troublemaker a little bit. And when I first got to college, I still had that like thing to me where I was kind of like, I like breaking rules and stuff. And he always, he never let go of me. Never, uh, he never turned his back on me, kept me, kept going with me. And then and finally, man, my going into my sophomore year, I just remember everything kind of just changed, man. I just, I wanted to, to please him. I wanted to, I wanted to like show him that I was like trying, you know, and, after that, I had a good good year that year, and then my whole kind of career changed after that. So yeah, what? Uh, how old were you when you started wrestling and playing sports in general? Sixth grade, sports real young. Okay, I've always man, I was like the kid that came out of the womb and I was like watching football. I was like, I got to do it, you know. Like I played soccer, I played baseball, I ran track. Um, my uncle actually won the uh, Jim Thorpe Award in college. He was a college quarterback at uh, University of Colorado. And, man, he was just, like, the coolest thing to me. And so I kind of grew up around that. Yeah, I say, it sounds like your, your family was pretty successful at football. Yeah, my uncle was a stud. My grandpa was a three-time All-American at uh, OU University in the, in the late 60s. He played with, like, Steve Owens, who was a um, Heisman Trophy winner. And so, yeah, man, we have, we have some <laughs> studs. My great-grandma was uh, the uh, – point guard for the usa women's basketball oh, wow. team at, in the pan ams so like yeah i mean we have some we have some studs and um man i don't know i just that was just kind of what i what i chose to do like my friends would ride bikes i i would lay on my back and throw the football up in the air and catch it or i'd shoot basketball i don't know man i just have always been into athletics even now man i like if basketball games on i'll sit and watch it and get into it you know maybe have like a beer or something and just relax um but yeah man 
I started wrestling in sixth grade, though. Started wrestling late, later. Than yeah, I was gonna say that's a little bit later. A little bit later, sixth grade. Yeah, man. I, I moved to a I moved to a town that was kind of before I moved to Tulsa. It was kind of hood. Like it was it was pretty bad. It was pretty rough. And I was getting in some fights, and my dad was like, "Listen, dude, we got to get you into something different. Like, we got to." I mean, my dad wrestled until he was a junior in high school. So it wasn't like a big thing in my family, mm-hmm. but I started it, man. I was horrible. I was <laughs> horrible. Dude. I was one in 32. I remember the only kid, the first kid I ever beat. One in 32 how, and you, you stuck yeah, with it. Shit. Stuck with it. I was one in 32. I was just determined to whoop these dudes ass, man. I was like, I needed it. Right. But I remember the first guy I beat, his name was Tanner Sutherland from Marlowe. And that was to put me into the state tournament. There was like five kids in my bracket at regionals and you had to get top four. Uh-huh. And me and him went to overtime and I took him down and I went to state. I went 0-2 at state. But but that I was, what, were you, what year was that? That was my sixth grade year. That was your first year. So that was your only my win. first year. My only win got me in the state. <laughs> state and man. I got. I think I got pinned first round by a kid named Shelby Kraut in a cradle. I remember that. And then the second match, man, the kid I just remember him just like just whooped me. Dude, isn't it how wild how how like from wrestling like you remember everyone's name like you remember all these kids' names? I always do that too. Yeah, it's weird, huh? Like I, that's what what I tell people all the time. Like wrestling, man, I can go to almost any state, right? Any big city in any state, and call up somebody I know and like hang out with them. Yeah, you know, and and be able to like have the conversation, you know, not be awkward. Like most of the time, you talk about wrestling, right? What's going on in the wrestling world, and but like you have something to do almost everywhere I go. So yeah. you build a lot of relationships, and, and you meet a lot of people, and, and it's uh, it's kind of like its own little separate world that a lot of people don't understand. But it's it, it's, it's cool, man. I yeah, like it's it. funny. Like that's how I talk about like all over New York State. I'll be like, I don't know, someone will mention a city in New York State, and I'll be like, oh shit, yeah, I wrestled a kid from there. Like it's, yeah, <laughs> you just be like, yeah, man, I know him, and you'll be and like three people know him. And you're like, oh wow, and then, yeah, that's yeah, what always happens. They'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, I know that kid. They'll be like, oh yeah, yeah sure. I know that kid. He was good. Yeah, 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 for sure. So that was kind of a cool thing that 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 wrestling has has brought into my life for sure. So I'll tell you what, like looking back, I've I've talked about this on the podcast before, but see, I started wrestling when I was like five, really, really, really? young, and I yeah. almost wish I didn't start until like sixth grade. Because by the time I got to my junior year of high school, dude, I was just burnt out. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, man, I, I, I coach a lot of kids now. I help with a little kids program out here. And you, you see, uh, you, since I go to all these little kid tournaments, you see parents, man, and they, they're just wild. And I'm like, dude, your son is eight. Yeah. Like, he doesn't need to be great right now. Because in my whole life, I've seen so many guys that have won – throughout their whole lives and then they get to high school and then you kind of see like they they kind of just kind of get tired of the responsibility of everything you know yep, because that's what they've is. done it they've done it for so long and it's a tough sport dude it's like, a very <laughs> tough sport you're cutting weight when you start six you know you're cutting weight i mean i see eight-year-olds cutting weight i'm like wow man when i was eight i was eating like I don't even zebra cakes and like yeah. <laughs> drinking Coke. My dad, I mean, when there was no diet there, I'm a kid. My metabolism is just rocking. Mm-hmm. And then you see these kids and they're like, their mouth's all dry. They look miserable. They didn't sleep. I'm like, dude. But yeah, man, um, I, I, I agree with, I, like when, if I have a kid and he's a, and he's a boy and he wrestles, I don't think I'll, I'll have him start wrestling until about sixth grade, fifth grade. Yeah, I think, it, but you know, then it goes both ways. Because actually, it's a funny story. The, the first tournament I ever went in when I was in sixth grade or six years old, five or six years old, well, I can't remember, I think five, five years old, the first tournament I ever went in, one of the kids I ended up wrestling was Kyle Dake. No way. My, my second match ever. And guess what? It was in the loser's bracket. Like, I, my first match ever, I get beat. Second match ever, it's against Kyle Dake. Craziest yeah, man. ever. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, I, it'd be hard to wrestle him now for sure. Oh, of course, yeah. The guy's a beast, man. He's he good. beat me then. He beat me worse now. One of my favorites for sure to watch. Oh yeah, yeah. There's no. What is it with guys named Kyle? There's a lot of badass. Oh man, Kyle, just, man. hey. <laughs> you let me tell you another funny. Kyle story Snyder. Case. When I yeah, Kyle Snyder, Kyle Day. Hmm? Um, when I was growing up, man, I I was 
worked in a little, I was like, what is it, was a daycare? I was in daycare with this kid, and he was a little fat kid. I'm not going to say his last name, but his name was Kyle. Yeah. And man, I, was, I just remember being so mad at my dad for naming me Kyle. So I was like, you name me, and this dude has the same name. Like, we are definitely not the same person. But I just remember, man, I was so mad. So, I mean, maybe it's not everybody named Kyle, but there are a lot of Kyles that I know that are peace. Yeah, I don't know. Could just yeah, be a coincidence. Kyle, it could be a very, I mean, Kyle Dagg and Kyle Snyder are definitely up there with the uh, with the top, the, <laughs> the great yeah. shit, the greats of all time, really. Yeah, right now, I mean, I don't think wrestling has ever been as good as it is now in the United States. No, I don't think and it is. Got, and it's guys like that. I mean, I, I go to these kids' tournaments, and I'm like, I'm blown away. I mean, all I knew was a double egg and a snake. I was like, I snake him, I win. You know, like, I'm going yeah. for it. But like I said, I was 1-32, in 32, so you got to understand that the double egg and snake wasn't really working too much. Yeah, for well, you know time. what happened to me is um, – like so, my you talk about like your family was big into football. Like my family was big into wrestling. So like from the from the day one, it was just like, oh, you're going to be a wrestler, um, and it always came super super natural to me. Just as yeah. soon as I got out on a mat, just you know, good balance, pretty strong. Always like really strong for my weight class and, and stuff. So the problem with that is I never really had to learn good technique, you know, just because I started young and I just like out muscled kids. So here I was yeah. in high school. Just I was kind of sloppy, but it worked until I wrestled yeah. someone who was really good, and then it didn't work as well anymore. So I was kind of the yeah, same. Man, like th- that makes a lot of sense, you know. Like I started at an age where you kind of can learn, and you know, you can really grasp it. When you're a kid, man, you don't. You kind of just whoever's the mo- more athletic and whoever's a little bit stronger is most of the time going to win. And it, yep. your kid, I mean, your kid could be way better, but his kid could be like freakish looking. And that kid will just dog your kid. But it's like, yeah, man, I, I know exactly what you mean. I don't know. I guess I was just kind of – I guess I was kind of lucky to have the situation that I was in as well. I was around a lot of good coaches starting late. So Yeah, that's important too. Like having, having coaching. Yeah. Like, I don't think Very important. Talked about enough. Like at the little – you know, like middle school, high school level, um, if, you, if, you're, if you get lucky enough to have like a really good coach, shit, mm-hmm. man, your development just is like escalated. Yeah, because, I mean, I just remember my dad was my coach most of my years, and he was really good. But then we brought in two guys. One guy wrestled at Oklahoma State. His name was Justin Porter. And when he brought him into my high school, man, I just remember everything just went way differently for me. Mm-hmm. And I'm not taking anything from anybody that's ever helped me. There was, I mean, I won state my, I won junior high state my second year wrestling, right? So it was kind of like a big deal yeah. at that time. Um, so I got good off of the coaches I had, but I just remember the technique that I was learning from this other guy named Justin Porter. I just remember everything kind of changed for me, man. And, and traveling and, and wrestling nationally, those are all things that kind of were big factors and everything. But yeah, coaching is a huge thing, man. It really what, is. What was your, uh, your high school career like? Um, my senior year, I won Fargo. My junior year, I was top five in the country. My senior year, I was, I think, one in the country and some of the uh like intermat and some of those things and i was number two in some of them um i was a two-time state champ i beat my junior year i went down a weight to beat the best kid in oklahoma who was going for his three his name was zach skates he was going for his third state title he was committed to oklahoma state i was a junior i haven't won state yet but to me man i was just like I just want to be the best. I don't really care to win state. I want people to be like, dude, this dude's for real. You know, like I had nothing to lose. Like, well, I didn't win state again. Like whatever, Uh you know? So I ended up beating the kid in in a crazy overtime match. And then after that, everything really, really changed for me. Confidence went up. I started going nationally and, and, and placing everywhere. And then my senior year, I just kind of ran away from everybody in high school. Yeah. So it sounds like you, so the one year that you went down a weight class to wrestle the best dude sounds like Vision Quest. Kind of. I mean, I never thought about it because, like I said, man, I didn't know very much about wrestling when I was growing up. Like, I just did it, you know, because I knew, I mean, I knew who, who the quarterback was for the Saints. You know, yeah. I knew who was playing basketball for whoever, the Lakers. But, like, I didn't really know anybody in wrestling. I didn't know who Kel Sanderson was. I didn't know any names. So, yeah, I just kind of just got good at it. And I just was – I'm tired of hearing everybody's name. And no one was really talking about me. So, I was like – I told my dad, I was like, listen, dude. I was at a tournament. I won. It was Gary Oakley. And I won it at 170. And everyone kept saying, like, 
oh, Zach's gay. Zach's gay is the best kid in the state. Hey, da, da, da. So I told my dad, I was like, dude, I'm tired of wrestling at 170. I'm going to go down and beat him. That's what I want. And my dad was like, man, let's just win state at 70. You're number one. We haven't won state yet. And I was like, dude, I'm telling you right now, my ass is going to 160. So you can either get on board with it or just watch me do it because I'm beating this kid. And my dad was like, all right, let's do it. And you could tell when I said let's do it, you could tell my coaches were very, very serious. They got really serious with me, and we ramped it up. Because the kid was good, man. He was going for his third state title. He was Oklahoma State commit. And like I said, man, I had a lot of coaches talking to me, but I, and Coach Smith still wasn't talking to me. And it was really kind of to get his attention. Like, you want this kid? Okay, I'm going to beat him. That's what I want. You want him? I'm going to beat him, and then you're going to want me. That's what's going to happen. And essentially, that's kind of what happened. Did, so, uh, did that kid end up going to Oklahoma State? Yeah, man. Yeah, he did. Um, some things happened with him. He ended up having to leave, but I'm not really going to put him on blast yeah. like that. But, yeah, I mean, he was tough. He was a good wrestler. He had a good career. He was a couple times state champ. Um, he ended up going D2, I think, after that. and was a couple-time All-American. So he ended up, you know, doing well for himself. He's a coach now. And, oh, cool. But, good shit. Yeah, man, yeah. like I said, I don't, I don't really uh, – I don't know. I just, I just knew that he was the best at the time, and I wanted to whip his ass. So That's the great thing about wrestling, though. Like, yes. you know, it's shit. If there's someone out there. Put yourself you're on by the, yourself. Yeah, it's a team there's sport. No one else nothing, out there. There's nothing your your teammates are going to do when you're out on the mat. No, you know? zero. I, I just used to always love that. Block for you, like I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I've there's been times where I've gotten beat in front of a lot of people, you know, and it, it is kind of embarrassing. But I think what good wrestlers understand is it's not so much embarrassing. You know, I think that's what guys got to understand. It's not embarrassing, right? It's just that guy was better than. Yeah, and, and you know, especially when you get to college, you see these kids who, you know, every match they have to win, and they freak out when they lose, and they talk about how they're embarrassed and things like that. And I just really never had that perspective, man. I just have always thought, you know, I know what I'm doing. You know, no one's in here doing what I'm doing except the guys that I'm with, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm not. They're not embarrassed by me. So why would I? Why would I be embarrassed by myself? So. I don't know, man. I just, that was just something that I was wanting to say. Yeah, for sure. So in high school, you were kicking everyone's ass, then you get to Oklahoma State. And I'm sure at first, it was kind of a little bit of a wake up call because everyone there is great, right? I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. I've never cried until I wrestled Tyler Caldwell, which I'm sure you know who that is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wrestled him in a 20 minute live go when I was a freshman. And the way he beat me, dude, I'll never forget it. <laughs> I just remember at the end of practice, I sat on the wall for like an hour and a half crying. I was like, dude, I do not want to do this anymore. Yeah. Because my workout partners, when I first got there, was Chris Perry, Tyler Caldwell, Alex Darren. Yep. <laughs> Nobody else. <laughs> And there were days that were so bad. On my feet, I was okay. But when we would do top and bottom, for sure, dude. I remember one time, Caldwell put my shirt over my mouth. Oh, that's the worst. My shirt was soaking wet. And he was holding my mouth, dude. And I was like, oh, my God. We ended up fist fighting one time when I was a freshman. I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. But, man, those guys, they help me out so much, and, and, and we talk about it all the time. I see them all the time because I'm constantly in Oklahoma for my fights and coaching tournaments and things like that. And, man, without those guys, I never would have had the career I had. Like, there were so many humbling things that were going on, you know. So, but, yeah, man, my first year there was rough. It was well, real, real rough. Yeah, I can I imagine. I got those. a takedown for seven months or something like that. That's nuts. But that was bad. But shit, that kind of set you up for years to come afterwards. Yeah, man, and and that's why I tell I tell people all the time when they go to college, man, this, that stuff is hard. College wrestling is a lot different than high school. Like high school, you, you kind of once you kind of hit the mecca, there's about three guys that can kind of hang with you at your yep. right, four maybe five. When I was in high school, and there wasn't very many, but 
Um, now he's like, I don't even know. They're all good now. It feels like yeah, dude. This is like you said. This is the best shit. Best American wrestling. Yeah, if you if you've seen what Coach Smith said, everybody's like, oh, wrestling this, wrestling that. And he's like, I don't know why y'all keep talking about how wrestling's like this. Man, this is the best time wrestling's ever been in, in the United States. Everybody's good. Everybody's somewhat good now. Well, well, look at just the the team that was at uh, Worlds. Yeah, I mean, we're we're not just beating people. We're teching the best dudes in the world, and the dudes from Russia, which yeah. everybody knows that those dudes are predominantly the best. And we're honestly no, I, actually, I don't care. They we take big shits on them now. But yep. they really haven't been able to compete with us very much. It, well, well, Dake didn't even uh, have a point scored against them. Yeah, dude's a monster. <laughs> dude is a freak, man. He really is. Yeah. He's fun to watch, too. So uh, at he's what so point? Explosive. Yeah, he is so explosive. It's crazy. He does a lot of, uh, like, the functional patterns training. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't, I don't follow him or anything because, I mean, I'm, I'm not someone that follows someone I don't know. Yeah. But I definitely know what he's about and what he's doing, right? I definitely know he's out there training a lot harder than a lot of people for sure. Yeah. When did, uh, when did you decide that you wanted to, to go the MMA route? Oh man. When I was like eighth grade. Yeah. <laughs> I watched Johnny Hendricks fight. We had a big little party. I was a partier, man. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. We had a big party and, uh, my buddy had like a bunch of people over. I'm telling you, we were like eighth grade. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Johnny was fighting and I was like, dang that's so cool you know because he's an oklahoma state guy yep. he's an oklahoma guy and all my friends were like dude you could do that because i'm not, i was always fighting i was always fighting people even though i was junior high and uh i was like man i really could do that and then ever since man i just always had in the back of my mind like after college that's what i was gonna do so yeah so when you're wrestling in college like that was i mean that was your goal right along you were planning on going the mma route yeah i was just trying to get i mean i wanted obviously I, there was a point in time where i was like you know what well, we could maybe do the olympic right yeah because my freestyle i was pretty good i was really good at freestyle it was more of my best style i think if that would have been what we were wrestling like like the style in college i definitely would have done a lot better um uh, but yeah i mean i just i don't know i just always thought like I'm a physical guy. I like to put my hands on people and I put my hands on people illegally. So now I have an opportunity to do this and not get in any trouble and make some money with it. And I still wanted to compete. So yeah, it was that, was perfect. Another, that was another way for me to be able to do it. My mom wasn't too happy. I was going to say, what did, uh, what did your mom think? What did your parents think? My dad's all back. Yeah. My dad's all in. My mom, she's in, but she, when she goes to my fights, she's like, she has to take a bunch of shots before, <laughs> like, she's like, I hate it. Like I'll show her, I showed her a, a, the highlight of Cerrone head kicking that dude the other day. The other night. Yeah. Did you hear the, did you hear it though? Did you hear the, the way? It yeah, it was, yeah, it was crazy. Dude, <laughs> I showed my mom that and she goes, Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Typical. I was like, well, hopefully that never happens, but I'm sure it'll happen one day. It's MMA. Well, Everybody well the one thing is, is, is wrestling is shit, man. It's, it's the perfect gateway to MMA. Look at all the champions. Yeah. I mean, man, the, the, since I've, since I've started it, I'm sorry, man, I got I'm getting ready for it. Oh, no problem. Practice. But since I started it, I've always been able to stay, stay in fights. Right. Um, just because of because of my wrestling. I mean, don't get me wrong. I broke my nose since I've been in this. I've gotten dropped like three times. When you first start, man, they throw you into the wolves out here. Like, I'm not talking about like just normal ass wolves. I'm talking about I fought Luke Rockhold one time. Yeah, when I first started, and that was a doozy. Let me tell you that much. I can I got imagine. My, got my ass whooped, humbled. Um, what's he? What's he weighing in the off season? Man, I don't, I don't really know too much about what he does because he's not with us anymore. Mm -hmm. I'll see you guys. But, um, yeah, man, he, uh, I'm sure he's probably about 215. But he's like a polo model and shit. So yeah. I mean, he's like a big-looking dude. Big, big, like, frame, too. Big frame, big feet, big legs. I mean, dude, honestly, I'm not, like, into that kind of stuff. But dude's a good-looking dude. I mean – 
he deserves what he got going for him. So, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to act like he doesn't. Well, you, you, you uh, train with Habib too, right? Yeah. Yeah. What's that like? Just that. Uh, man, I've, I've never really sparred him uh, just because I'm, I'm so much bigger than him when, when he's in camp, when he's yep. in weight. Um, and he, I mean, that's not really smart for him, but I wrestle him. So what's that like? I've heard... We have a, we, I do good, man. I just, I, I, we're not really allowed to say much about like who wins. And yeah, I can like imagine. That, but um, he competes, we compete when we wrestle. So, but he's tough, man. He's a good, obviously he's tough. Man. Oh yeah. Obviously he's tough. He's everybody's ass. So what do you, what do you think's next for him? I can see a McGregor rematch. You don't think I they're going to give him uh, Tony Ferguson? I, I, the way I see it is this: like, if if McGregor's fighting, everybody's watching. Yep. Right. If Ferguson's fighting, people are watching, but it's not that intriguing, you know. And the money fight every time will be Conor McGregor. Yep. Now, could I see him fighting Ferguson? Yeah, that make that's the most that's the most logical, you know, as far as like hanging with this dude and things like that. But McGregor, I mean, I'd fucking fight McGregor. Yeah. Right now. Why not? Because <laughs> you're gonna get paid, whatever, whatever, more than you would be for fighting anybody else. Yeah. And why not? Yeah. You know, when's uh, when's your next fight? Next Friday. No oh, shit. Next Coming Friday. right up. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been, I've already trained three times a day. I'm going to train my fourth time right now. So oh, awesome. Uh, well, well, shit, dude. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll let you go train. But how can how can people get more information about you? Oh man, we can keep going if you want. Okay. Guess, All right. Shit. I got we'll keep a going then. Time. All I right. Go up there a little early. So All right. If you want, we can keep talking. Yeah, oh yeah. Let's keep it rolling then. Cool. Okay. So what, um, you, you talked in the beginning that you, uh, were on a pretty strict diet. What, what do you got going on? Man, I, I when I was in college, we, we didn't have the whole meal prep thing, right? Like, mm-hmm. honestly, I ate like shit and all of us did. And we didn't, I, I never really was educated on nutrition. I'm from Oklahoma, man. We don't do nutrition. We just eat whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we would just eat bad. I would eat like I thought noodles was good all the time. So I'd be eating hella carbs, didn't even realize it, you know, just didn't know why I wasn't losing weight. I would have a Pepsi, but I would have a water, you know, because I was like, all right, you know, you definitely need a water. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I like Pepsi. <laughs> but now, I mean, I mean, I'm like a jug and a half of water a day, you know, lean chicken, little light sodium, you know, so I could sweat. Um, instead of like the sugars, just like the chocolate and all that i go you know fruits now mm-hmm. um but man it, i eat in the morning he's not eat in the morning just you know there's just strategic ways to do it and now that i've been around dc and and then seeing around being around those lockhart and Heath guys that do those nutrition things yep, yep. It taught me a lot so yeah man like my weight cuts are way easy like i make weight and i'm like wow i one of my weigh-ins, I weighed, well, I made 75. When I was in college, making 74, my last two years was like crazy hard because mm-hmm. I was eating so shitty and I was just yeah, gaining yeah. a hell of weight. And I was just what were you mad. doing to, to make weight? Just stop eating essentially? Every time I'd run, every time I'd eat, I'd go run three or four miles. Yeah. And plastics and all that dumb shit. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, well, I need to eat, but then I need to go work out. Yeah. So... Me and Alex Derringer, we would meet every night at like 9 p.m. And we would run like three miles, stance in motion, sit in the st- uh, steam room, and then go home and, and get like a little snack go to bed. Yeah. Which is terrible, man. We were doing so much more than we should have been. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, you're, yeah, you're doing all this extra conditioning, which, I mean, the conditioning was probably good. But, I mean, you're doing probably more than you needed to. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you, you essentially – like now, man, I, I'm like, I do my conditioning and then like, I can take a night off now, you know, when I start feeling a little run down and mm-hmm. like, and I'm okay with it. But like in college there, you, you're like, always have that anxiety. Like you need to go do something else. 
to make sure you're not overweight. Well, yeah, that's the thing. You get to a point where you're not doing the conditioning for the actual conditioning. You're just doing it for the weight loss and weight maintenance. For the weight loss. That's yeah. It. You did your conditioning already. You did the actual conditioning for the day, but now you're just adding when your body's already extremely tired, you're just adding on to it. And you're shocking your nervous system and doing things like that that now I know, but I didn't know at the mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Before we wrestled Penn State, my senior year in the national championship duel, I was eight and a half pounds over an hour and a half out. Holy shit, what'd you do? Oh man, it was terrible. It was <laughs> so terrible. I just worked my ass off for an hour and a half. Coach didn't know. They said how much you over. I was like, I'm like four. Mm -hmm. They were like, Okay, well let's do this. And they were like, Why are you still going? I was like, Oh, I just I just want to make sure I'm real warm. Then <laughs> would, I was were you just would, would you do like uh get an air dine and i drilled i drilled with one of the so in college we would have like our 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 backups or our third strings and they would be like the guys we drilled with right like in my senior year i don't think anybody ever shot on me when we were drilling yeah. i had a guy who was one of my one of my better friends and he kind of understood his role and he uh i just drilled on him all the time man and i drilled for like an hour and then I got in a uh, steam room in for like 30 minutes. And I made weight by like half a pound under. I lost like nine pounds. <laughs> in a couple hours? Yeah, but I was miserable. Oh, I bet. And then I just remember trying to eat stuff after, trying uh, to hydrate. My stomach was all messed up. And I'm wrestling Mark Hall. Yep. Right? So I know I'm in for it. The guy's good, real good. But... End up, I ended up, man, the crowd was so crazy that I just kind of like all that shit just kind of went away. I was just so ready to wrestle. And then, yeah, me and him had a barn burn. It was a good match. So it was tough. Yeah. And now you're, you have, do you have the, the weigh in process pretty dialed in now? Oh, the weigh in process is a day before. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, like the, the process, it's pretty easy for you now. Like you oh, weigh in the day oh, before man. and rehydrate. So way easier. I can't explain how easy it is now. Like what, I'm uh, eight over a week out, and I like I I drank a gallon and a half already today. I've ate two times, and I've worked out three times, and I just feel I feel like I can go again. So yeah, do you have uh, do you do like a, a water loading process like like early no, but week? some some people do. I don't. I don't. I I, I cut back um, water. Like some people will drink like two gallons, two and a half gallons, like two days in a row mm -hmm. and man i just i don't i don't really i'm not into that i, I feels like shit it's a lot of water you like feel bloated yeah i think a gallon and a half for me is good so you just so, keep that pretty consistent and then probably cut it just at the end the last my last fight i made weight the night before so the next day i drank five and a half pounds when i woke up and i ate a full chicken breast and like some vegetables and some fruit and then went and did my last weight cut and I lost six and a half in like 40 minutes. Oh, wow. And I'm, and it was like the easiest 40 minutes I've ever done in my life. I just sat in the sauna. I was like sweating. I was kind of moving around. I started hitting miss with my boxing coach. And then next thing I know, I'm like, dude, I'm telling you, I'm down. Yeah. You know, I can just feel it. And we checked weight and I was down and went and made weight. And I really like, you know, when you make weight, you're like, oh, I got to drink 30 drinks. You end up only drinking like four, three of them. Yeah. I didn't even, I had like the, like a jug of water and like some BCAAs and I was like, good. I didn't feel like I needed to go get a bunch of drinks. So what's a lot um, better now. Yeah. It's, it sounds, it sounds a lot, a lot more manageable. What's, what's your training like leading up for the fight? Oh man. I, uh, I spar hard from 12 to two Mondays and Wednesdays, sometimes Fridays. So like live fight. Um, where you're like literally trying to knock each other so out. So you spar twice a week? Yeah, twice a week. And then light spar on Friday, which is kind of just seeing punches and kicks being thrown at you. Um, so Tuesdays we wrestle. Uh, Thursdays we grapple, like jujitsu. But the way we grapple is not really just jujitsu. We try to like put people in, you know, in harm's way and mm -hmm. damage them a little bit. So, And then uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays I hit mitts at 5. And then uh, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays at night, I do, you know, a cardio or a lift or whatever I'm feeling. So you're doing like strength and conditioning like three days a week and then everything yeah. else? Everything else. 
Um, and then sometimes at like 11 to 12, I'll hit like mitts with my boxing coach before I spar. And then from six to seven, some nights I'll do the jiu-jitsu class and things like that. And sometimes at 11 to about 11 to 12, I'll do one-on-one with our instructor, our jiu-jitsu instructor. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm six days a week, man. So six days a week sounds really like a lot of sessions. Quite a lot of stuff. What, um, what's the strength so cool, man, on Saturdays? I live by Santa Cruz. Well, when I was in college, man, we had a strength conditioning coach that was legit. His name was yeah. Gary Calcano. Yeah. And, uh, he just taught us a lot, man. And so I know how to lift as far as strength and conditioning goes, I'll put four or five miles in, um, on the treadmill or, um, some days like when I'm in camp, I like to do a lot of sprints. Yeah. You know, like this like six to eight one minute sprints on the treadmill in between kind of light jog. So I get the heart rate up and the heart rate comes back down, things like that. What were you, what were you going to say there uh, about where you live? Oh man. On Saturdays I live by Santa Cruz. So I go to the beach and just, we do a little workout on the beach, you know? So that's pretty that's, sweet. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. The weather's real nice. So yeah. Awesome. Ways. So you got your, you got your fight next week and then, uh, what are you thinking for the future? I mean, right now, man, anything can happen. Obviously, mm-hmm. you know, it's one of those things. Hello. Um, man, hopefully UFC by the end of the year, maybe by the beginning of next year. That's our plan. The way things are looking, I think I'm going to be all right. So that's our plan, man. Trying what, to what, uh, one of the best. what weight are you thinking in the UFC? Um, 170 middleweight, uh, welterweight. My bad. Yeah. So 170. Yeah. Cool. So awesome. Oh, man, man. I gotta, I gotta get this wrestling private going. No problem. How uh, can, how can people cut a little short? Oh, no problem. How can uh, people get more information about you? What's your Instagram? Uh, Kyle Crutchmer at Kyle Crutchmer, K Y L E C R U T C H M E R. Awesome. I'll put the link in the show notes. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Absolute Strength Podcast. I know I had a ton of fun producing it for you. And before you go, if you could just drop me some feedback, I'd love it. I love reading your feedback. So you can go over to iTunes, leave a five-star rating, write a little review of what you think of the podcast. I absolutely love it. I read every single one. But it's cool if you don't want to do that. I get it. I get it. No one wants to really go out of their way to, to do anything, let alone write a review. But I want to get your feedback. So send me, drop me a line on Instagram at Hunt Fitness or on Facebook kyle hunt or on twitter or send a a pigeon or something i don't don't know i just want to hear your feedback so if you want to give me some feedback let me know what you think hit me up on instagram at hunt fitness and before you go i have one last thing one last thing i want to say i have a program i want you to check out it's actually called the absolute strength program and the link is in the show notes it's a program i designed to help increase my own squat bench and deadlift and i got pretty strong off of it and i think you're gonna like it It's it's a great book thousands of people have got amazing results from it It's in the show notes. All right, guys. Until next time. Until next episode. Peace.